This, shot, this section is on bank and shallow water effects, how they affect our vessel and uh, how we're gonna respond when we start to feel those effects. Okay, when we talk about bank effect, we are talking about what happens when we're proceeding along a channel, narrow channel, when we're close to the bank, river bank, uh, even in a uh, harbor where we're close to the dock, a solid pier face, something like that, where we're squeezing the water between our vessel, between our hull and the side of the bank. When we squeeze the water, then all of a sudden we change the dynamics and change the pressures on our hull, which are gonna affect our vessel. So it's most pronounced even in shallow water where not only are we changing the effect of the water to the side of our hull, but underneath as well. What happens when we're proceeding along, you know, we're splitting the water down both sides of the hull and in normal open ocean navigation, uh, that's no problem. Uh, goes around us, connects behind us in our wake and, and that's it. But when we're next to a bank, a solid bank, now we're squeezing it, we create something else to happen. We compress the water at the bow, we actually build up the water level and that building up that pressure, building up that water level pushes our bow away from the bank. We call that uh, bow cushion or bank cushion. Now, after, after that happens, of course, the water's got to rush out, it's trying to even out. And so it's rushing out behind us. So as the water speeds up and squeezes between our hull and the bank, uh, it increases speed and that it increased speed causes a venturi effect. A venturi effect causes low pressure. So we have high pressure at the bow, pushing our bow away, low pressure at the cern, stuck sucking our stern in towards the bank. And the uh, end result is pushing our bow out, stuck in our stern, sucking our stern in, and we tend to be pushed out into the center of the channel. You think, well, that's great. Uh, that's good, uh, closer, more open water and so on. Well, it's fine as long as nobody's coming the other way. But if you're in a narrow channel in a river, have other outbound traffic or traffic in the opposite direction, yeah, you don't want to be veered out right in front of them. So what do we do about it? Simplest thing to do is carry a little bit of rudder. And this is can be a little counterintuitive, counter, uh, kind of scary that our hazard is off to one side and the way that we deal with uh, bow cushion bank uh, stern suction is to actually steer towards the ha hazard. So we got to carry a little bit of rudder in that direction, but that's going to result in us driving in a straight line. If we have twin screws, we can actually slow down the speed on the inboard engine by slowing speed on the inboard engine or the near shore engine that will also tend to veer us towards uh, the shore which just then us traveling in a straight line uh, one of the things we can do to mitigate that is to slow down if you just slow down then there's not building up so much water pressure at the bow not creating such uh, low pressure at the stern and all these effects will be reduced uh, which is one thing you can do uh, another thing, one of the main things we remind people those you do, you're carrying a little bit of right rudder or you're slowed down on your inboard near shore engine. You got to remember when you reach an opening or it opens up on that side, if you don't straighten out your rudder or if you don't equalize your engine RPMs, you're going to veer right into that opening, uh, which may not be what you want to do. Same kind of effect happens if you're passing close to other vessels. You're squeezing water between you and where it initially squeezes in, you're causing a, a bow cushion. Uh, it increases the pressure, tends to push away. Water is speeding up to go between the vessels and causing low pressure. And so you end up, both, both vessels end up going apart from each other. And if you're doing underway replenishment or you're trying to you know, bring a pilot to a cruise ship, a larger ship or something, when you actually want to be up next to them, you find that it's difficult because your bow tends to want to go away, stern tends to suck in and you tend to, you're trying to get up there close, but you just keep uh, turning away. You have to force your bow into it. Uh, but if you're doing underway replenishment, uh, you want to keep proceeding along the same distance. Both vessels actually have to turn towards each other slightly um, just to maintain a straight course. 
Um, one of the things we get into these situations, it can be really tricky. If you get too close, sometimes people panic and uh, they start to turn away because they think they're getting too close. And then, of course, when they turn away, their sterns get even closer. And the closer the sterns get, the more low pressure you get. Sucks them in. Almost all collisions in these situations happen at the stern. It's a very odd thing. It's not so much when you're driving, but if you're working uh, on your vessel at the dock, you have to be careful of vessels passing close aboard. Vessels passing close aboard, even if they don't wake you out, they can cause strains on your mooring lines and moving your boats around because it's the same thing. That pressure increases, it pushes away, then it sucks in, and so your boat will move around. Your uh, lines will go taut. If you're standing too close to the lines, you got to be careful. Uh, puts a little uh, strain on them, so you got to be careful of that. Last thing we'll talk about is shallow water squat. Shallow water squat, you're the same thing. Same things are happening, but we're talking about now in the vertical plane. You're squeezing water beneath you. The water's got to speed up to rush out behind you, so it creates low pressure. You actually create a hole at your stern. Your stern sinks down into that hole, which causes even more low pressure. Water's moving faster, trying to equal out. And you actually drop the water level around your stern when you're in shallow water. Uh, here in Southeast Alaska, we see this on the ferries when they're going through Wrangell Narrows or uh, through Olga Strait, Neva Strait near Sitka. Uh, we could watch the water level. It's like the tide's going out real fast. The water level sucks off the beaches on both sides and, uh, and then comes rolling back behind when that huge following wake comes behind you. There's videos on this on YouTube too. If you search it, you can see a shallow water squat or following wake effect. And you can watch what happens with cruise ships coming in and out of uh, Fort Lauderdale, things like that. So it definitely happens. And uh, people uh, here in Alaska, people complain about cruise ships and the big wake they cause. And the wake isn't so much from their speed, it's this shallow water effect and that following wake where the water's just coming in, trying to fill in that hole they created where they went through. And so that's it. That's uh, the bank effects and shallow water effects that will affect your vessel.